the Coast Guard sometimes supports law enforcement agencies with their inland cases. This story is similar, but this time it's an inland rescue. As a matter of fact, it's nearly 20 miles inland. It takes place in a small neighborhood in Homewood, Illinois, where there is a water tower. And if you think you have a tough job, check out what Mike Dunbar does. He maintains water towers. And during the winter, in the northern Midwest region of the country, that means removing ice that builds up on the slippery inner walls of these massive tanks. We got a call from a group Milwaukee asking us to assist the Homewood Fire Department in removing a guy from a water tower who had fallen inside the water tower and had injured himself. The major concern here was the individual was laying on a bed of ice inside the water tank. And the longer he laid there, the greater the probability of hypothermia setting in. So the important thing was to get the guy off the ice and uh, out of the situation and then warm him up as quickly as possible. Once we got in the general area, we contacted the Homewood uh, Fire Department via the radio. They assisted us in finding the actual water tower where the guy had fallen into and asked us to land in Jason Park because they had not yet stabilized the you know, victim from movement. They had to go into the tank and actually first they had to stabilize the patient and then they had to set up block and tackles at the top of the tank to remove the guy from the bottom of the tank. They pretty much did a hand over hand, pulled him to the top of the tank. Rescue to command. Rescue to the command. Command, go ahead. We got the patient out on top of the tower. Okay, we have instructions for you regarding the helicopter. Once we get started and the helicopter is up in the ground, you're going to coordinate directly with the helicopter. Are you clear on this? Yeah, clear on that. Uh, rescue 2 from 5005. The helicopter wants only one person next to the patient, and they're going to be coming in in just a minute. Message received. Make sure all of this equipment's out of the way. We're all tied in, every one of them. 531 is about ready to turn final for the tower at this time, sir. Are you uh, ready for it? Rescue 2, are you ready for the helicopter? Yeah, we are ready. 6531, they're ready for you. 31, Roger. We're on approach right now to the water tower. Message received. Just, uh, go Roger. Once we got the okay, it was getting pretty dark out, so we flew up to the tower. We uh, made a couple of uh, flights around the tower to get an idea of what to expect when we got there. We were worried about blowing somebody off the top of the tank. The firemen that were on top of the tank had secured themselves with emergency lines to the uh, top of the tank and to the block and tackle rig that they put up there. We came into a hover above the tank, about 50 feet above the tank, and our rescue swimmer was lowered down. Once he got the double straps in place and gave me the, the thumbs up to go ahead and start to pick up, I was looking right into his face, you know, he was looking at me. Are we okay? I tried to, I guess, give him a nice warm smile, you know, like, oh, hey, this happens every day. But uh, really, I was getting scared myself. We were spinning so fast, I couldn't even make out whether I was coming or going. Finally, I saw one of the wheels, and then I saw the flight next foot sticking out. We want to bring him up into the aircraft, because that would do more damage to the patient, as well as Terry. Um, so I stuck my leg out, grabbed my leg the first time, made a spin, uh, started to slow down, let go, grab my foot again, slow down even further. Luckily, he's wearing a safety belt, like this one, to keep him from falling out the side of the helo, and allowing him to hold steady until the spin stops. But then comes the task of pulling both the victim and the rescue swimmer into the helo. Once we got him stopped and brought the uh, patient in first, Terry helped me get him coordinated in, but the weight was really a, a factor. The, the gentleman was 260 some odd pounds, so trying to coordinate him in the sked wrap and Terry hooked on as well made it quite difficult, but uh, the both of us worked at it, got him inside the cabin, brought Terry into the cabin. Once Terry kind of regained his bearings of where everything was, uh, we were headed for the hospital. He was happy to be through with the situation 
Uh, he was happy to be in the hospital. You know, he's getting the warmth that he needed and was definitely that much closer to being home. This wasn't a standard rescue for us. We don't typically remove people from a 135-foot uh, water tower. It was a tough voice for everybody. At the hospital, the victim was treated for hypothermia and released the next day. Now, the majority of Coast Guard cases take the crews over water. And special cases like this one that require inland rescues illustrate the importance of interagency cooperation in the search and rescue business. In these cases, Coast Guard's flight crews and assets can be a victim's best hope, especially to support agencies without helicopters.